enough. We have um, tomato paste, the little tiny cans. Two onions we're gonna cut and put them in the middle. I like a little bit of spice on my turkey, so I use some cayenne pepper and black pepper. And it doesn't get any simpler than that. <clears throat> now with uh, my cooking, I used two of these bad boys because I had a uh, bad experience where one of these had uh, a hole in it. And when your stove catches on fire, it kind of looks like a bad morning. Now when we start using the sea salt to clean and, and kind of brine the turkey, we're going to want a clean area to do that. So make sure you clean out your sink really well because that raw turkey is going to be sitting inside this bad boy. Brand new, no salmonella around the edges. Alright, we got our turkey <clears throat> out of the package. We take out the giblets and niblets and all that good stuff. And then what we're going to want to do is start getting rid of all this fat. All this stuff. Gotta go. Because the fat is actually part of what makes that funky turkey flavor. I mean, you have the good turkey flavor and then you have that kind of, what the hell did I just eat flavor. So, what we're going to want to do is cut off all this icky stuff. Alright, a little bit of a process. Bad boy is tied up. Didn't want it running away. Well, it was frozen. Get rid of that. This turkey's actually not too bad. Sometimes the backs have a lot of fat on them. So what I do is just kind of start hacking. Hacking all that white stuff away. We're not going to need any of this stuff back here. But we definitely don't want this fat. Because after this turkey's done cooking, we're going to end up with a... A nice broth instead of uh, greasy gravy. Now what I'm going to do is make do the skin on, but take it to where I can get uh, salt up next to the meat. So I'm kind of taking the my hands and getting getting in between there, so we can rub this bad boy down some of the skin tears that's okay but for the most part we want to leave it on there the skin is pretty thin I think it was suffering we got ourselves um, coarse sea salt because basically we are going to use that sea salt a whole bunch of it inside inside and out don't be afraid to use it all because it's gonna brine it and it's gonna help clean off all the little pieces of uh, gunky stuff that makes your turkey taste funky. Salt's pretty cheap, so I buy a few of them. Just so I don't have to worry about some of that stuff going down the drain. Because I don't know if you've ever smelt a raw turkey, but it's got that uh, something you definitely wouldn't want to eat smell. And sometimes after you're done cooking it, it still kind of has a little bit of that that smell slash flavor. That's why people have to make gravy to cover up the taste. So we are going to town on this bad boy. And the legs, I want to get up in there and because down in here in the, that dark meat, there's some, some funky stuff. Now I know what you're thinking. This bird is going to taste like uh, the uh, Mediterranean Sea. But what we're going to do, after we're done doing all this, we're going to let it sit for a while. Maybe an hour or two. If you can let it sit overnight, that's even better. But this bad boy is going in the oven this morning. So it's just going to sit for about an hour with all this salt doing its trick. Kind of a, a rub brine. We're not going to soak it in any water or anything. And the salt kind of helps break down the collagen. Out of the inside. Definitely want to get the inside really good. right here there's a little bit of fat that 
sometimes the fat just pulls off. But I'm just gonna cut my finger off with some fat. There we go. It's snowing. The thing I wasn't a cocaine addict. It's pretty damn expensive pouring white stuff out like this. Since this bird's gonna be sitting on it for about an hour, the salt's gonna keep it from going bad or getting anything start growing on it, like salmonella. So we're just gonna cover the heck out of it like that. Let that do its thing. Come back in about an hour, rinse all that stuff off of there, and then uh, All right, so now we rinse this bad boy off. Pretty much got 99.9% .9 all the salt off there. To get our good old tomato paste to stick on there, we can't have it too damp on the outside. Otherwise, tomato paste just kind of wants to stay with its friend, a neighbor, tomato paste. So, I'm gonna pat dry it a little bit. <clears throat> and then we're going to get dirty. Kind of a dirty job. Get the tomato paste out of the can and onto the turkey. Just like that. <clears throat> now this is actually going to help with the acids in the tomato paste. Break down the turkey, kind of give it a good flavor. You can see we're just going to try to get it to stick wherever we can. And I like to go into meat areas and just kind of put it where we can. Again, it's, it likes to stick to everything but turkey, but we will we'll just force it. Now this turkey is probably the first one I've ever had that the skin didn't cooperate. Typically the skin's still kind of on here, but since we're going to be flipping this bad boy over and all this... Uh, meat's going to be, all the white meat's going to be soaking in the, the broth. We're not worried about it drying out. So get all of this covered up with the, uh, looks like it just killed this turkey by hand. You're going to die. All right, I'm going to get it inside, outside, all sides. This bad boy 20, 20 minutes per pound, this is a 15 pounder, so carry the one, divide by two. That would be about five hours, I think. Plus or minus a little bit. So, we are almost done coating this bad boy. With paste, yeah, maybe put its shirt back on. Isn't that looking good? What I've also done is I quartered two onions. We're just gonna put those bad boys inside there. They're gonna add to some flavor. And um, so just loosely toss those guys in there. How did that get in there? I don't be knowing, but that is not about to be, that is not about to be in there. All right, pepper, go heavy on the pepper. I like heavy on the pepper. I mean, you don't, you don't have to, but I do. So I like a little bit of, um, not hot as hell turkey, but just, just a little bit of heat. So I'm going to dust this guy with some cayenne pepper. Eventually all this stuff is going to get into the juice. I'm gonna be good. Since this thing's going in there kind of dry, we're not gonna have a lot of juice in there. I just put a little bit of um, chicken broth. Less sodium, because we do have some salt on this bad boy. Left over from brining it. A little bit of, uh, now you can pop one of these bad boys in there, right down here. I don't, only because it's kind of a pain in the ass. And um, if you cook this thing 20 minutes per pound, 
this guy 15 pounds two and a half hours gonna be on its back and then after two and a half hours I'm gonna flip it over two and a half hours with all this soaking in the juices um, I know it's done so I don't I don't use this morning I'm just gonna dust this bad boy with some uh, oregano and even though we have some salt on there just a real light dusting of Morton salt so from there we are going to cover this guy like so like we've got a hole here can't have that and we want all those juices to stay in with the tree our oven is been preheated to 350 degrees. Okay, we just pulled this guy out of the oven. It's been in there for two and a half hours and everything's looking good. We got some juices down in there. And what I use is a wooden spoon. Okay, so I use a wooden spoon <clears throat> and I put it in the middle because if you use something that's flexible, this thing's going to do a half gainer onto the floor and you definitely don't want that. So with this in the middle, it gives you something to, to hold on to. And I just kind of rotate it around like that. And voila. Piece of cake. And then from there, we're going to put the cover back on it and put it back in the oven for another two and a half hours. All right, here it is. We just pulled it out of the oven. You can see all the all the good juices. The turkey is definitely done. You can see where it's starting to pull away from the bone. Right there. And that was five hours on the dot. You could, uh, typically what I do is start taking all the dark meat off and then I flip it over and uh, take off the, the white meat and I'll show you how I do that here in a minute. Okay, my process is I get a pan, could be a disposable one, and then I take some of the um, the phenomenal juice out of here so as I cut the, the turkey I can put it right back in some juice and, and let it uh, uh, continue to, to marinate. Um, taking off the breast, you can see I already did one here, but you want to kind of cut down this direction and it, it will pretty much just fall right off the bone and then you're going to make a um, horizontal cut here and this whole breast is going to fall off and look like this. <clears throat> You want to cut this direction so you have nice pieces against the grain. I'll show you what that looks like in just a nanosecond. Just like that, two chicken breasts chopped up in three nanoseconds. And you might want to have some friends around because when you take some of these little pieces that happen to fall off and dip them in that juice, mm, and then eat it when it's right out of the oven, it is darn right addictive. Stuff is amazing. There you go, <clears throat> all carved up and ready to serve. Dark meat, white meat, and I got um, quite a bit more dark meat and a little bit more white meat that's still on the bone that needs to come off, but I'll wait until I have some more room for somewhere to put it. And you can see I leave um, quite a bit of that great uh, juice kind of around uh, the turkey just so it just doesn't dry out, keeps nice and uh, flavorful and juicy. Good luck.